Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep My name is Jason Newland Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes and that's it really I'm just going to talk for an amount of time which usually adds up to about an hour usually I'm not actually sure what number this is but usually I do know kind of I think it's about 166 or 167 I think well, I don't know I kind of really don't care it doesn't really matter does it it's just it's just a number so this is just going to be me talking about stuff. I don't know what stuff yet, but then I never really do know what stuff I'm going to be discussing before I press the record button on the recorder of which I am recording this recording for the podcast. But the main kind of overall idea is that I I'm extremely boring so that you can just relax your entire body and mind and drift off into a lovely perfect sleep Andre is asleep behind the door which is his new favourite place to sleep at the moment. I don't know why, but he loves it. He loves... He's got an old jacket of mine. I say old jacket. It's actually quite a nice jacket, but... The zip broke, so I couldn't wear it anymore. So I just... put it on the floor for him to sleep in. And I think there's a jumper there as well that I put. So he kind of just sleeps on top or underneath. Sometimes, the other day I went to get him to put him to bed. And he was cuddled up right inside the arm of the jacket. Like really, (laughs) I couldn't get him out. It's what I could. But it was kind of like, like an icing bag. I had to kind of squeeze him out the top. So, uh, if I just squeeze the happy birthday and out of Andre onto the floor, and he. That didn't happen, I don't know why I'm saying that. So, I've not been too well really the last few days, but I'm. I thought I'd make a recording anyway because. And there's there's no ending to that sentence. Oh my goodness, I've got no idea why I'm doing these. Why? Why? Well, some people like them, so that's why I do them. The 
other podcasts I do are doing really well too. So the deep sleep whisper hypnosis, the let what's the other one? Sleep hypnosis weekly. A couple of other insomnia sesh, uh, webcasts, webcasts, podcasts that have everything that I do to do with sleep on them. One of them's now reached 45,000 downloads. One's reached, I think, 39,000. I think the Deep Sleep Whisper has reached 42,000 downloads. Uh, this this one, Let Me Boy to Sleep, is 30-something. I think it's 37,000. I'm not sure, but it's... I suppose technically, really, the oh yeah, the deep the sleep hypnosis weekly podcast has reached, I think, seventeen thousand, which is probably the most successful one in the sense of there's only about fourteen episodes. So, it's, and this one's got 167 episodes. So yeah, and, and deep sleep whisper. I don't know how many there are. Over a hundred now. 107 episodes, something like that. So so far, there's. Uh, Overall, between all the podcasts, I've got about 230,000 downloads. So I should easily reach 500,000 by the end of the year. I'd like to have a, hun- um, a million, but it's kind of out of my hands, really, isn't it? I can make the recordings, but, you know, people listening to them, it's up to them. I can't, uh, you know, I could advertise, but that would cost money. Uh, I did actually do um, an advert for these, not for this podcast, but for the Facebook page that I've got. Uh, If you want to join that, it's Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Just put that into the Facebook search and the page will come up and you can like it if you want. But I set up an advert on Facebook and I ended up spending about £9 on the advert. And I I paused it because I thought, ooh, for what I was getting, I got about 14 people like the ad, the, you know, the page for £9. I'm not that bothered about people joining if it's going to cost me that much money. So, uh, yeah, I think I ended up, I've got about 100 and, how many have I got? 101, 106 likes on that page. You know, Facebook's never really got my head around it, really. You know, I've got, I got 30, over 30,000 likes on my, and followers on my Facebook hypnosis page, but still I don't get much activity on there. I've got just under 5,000, no, it's probably 4,000 friends on my normal Facebook page, and I don't get a huge amount of huge amount of uh, like interactions on there, but there are like quite a few people that I could say hello to and send messages to, and kind of got to know a bit. But the only thing that really gets any interest is when I put pictures of Andre on there. Everything else is just, I get the occasional like if I post a 
because I post everything I do onto the Facebook pages. So every time I make a new recording, whether it's a Let Me Bore You to Sleep or Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis or Sleep Hypnosis Weekly, whatever it is, I just, you know, I post them onto the Facebook pages and to Twitter. So, yeah. Oh, the other podcast. It's really growing, which I'm surprised. I don't know why I'm surprised, but... I was surprised when it started growing. And that's the... Relaxation Hypnosis for Anxiety, Stress and Panic Attacks. You know, it started growing a few couple of months ago. And then it got to the point where I was getting more and more. It was sort of, you know, steadily growing weekly in numbers per day. So I started doing, I've made two new recordings. So I had 34. It was a sort of standalone course, 34 episodes. And the 34th episode had over 3,000 downloads. So I thought, hmm, let's have a look at this. So I thought about it and I did number 35. Straight away, like spike, zoom up, people downloaded it. And then I did 36 and again, zoom up again. But not only zoom on the day I did it, but subsequent days grown as well compared to what it was before. So... I'm going to be doing more of those because I suppose you could say apart from these boring sessions I do and I know that not everybody listens to them to sleep some people listen to them because it's they like them for different reasons and I've been told that by a few people but it's you know it's it's personal for each person, but it's uh, it's my amazingly charismatic personality <laughs> that uh, it just grabs you, doesn't it? It's uh, I'm trying not to laugh at myself. So so these are you know in some ways. I probably enjoy doing these in some ways more than the other stuff I do uh, just because I can just mess around and I quite like that I quite like just mucking around and being silly and you know, not taking it all too seriously But with the other stuff I do, although I do, I still bring myself to the to the table. Whatever I do, I'm still it's still me. But with, I suppose with like the sleep hypnosis stuff, I kind of just get straight to it. Uh, with the weekly hypnosis sleep thing, because uh, that's a long. They're long recordings, so I kind of again just get get on it and do it. With the anxiety ones, it's more conversational, and yeah, so I. I suppose with the anxiety things I talk about my own experiences and because that's where I'm coming from with that stuff um, with sleeping uh, I'm not going to pretend that I've never had problems with sleeping because I have in the past um but gen generally, 
I'm a good sleeper. I don't mean like I'm a good boy, you know. Oh, a good sleeper you are. Generally, I... I sleep, you know. I can sleep during the day, at night, you know, whenever really. But I don't necessarily get a good night's sleep. Because I've got, um, what do you call it? I forget. It's a, it's a condition where you keep stopping breathing during the night. I've got that. And so, you know, I perhaps don't get the best sleep that I could. Um, but falling asleep is something that I find fairly easy-ish. But also... I do have the luxury, usually, not all the time, but sometimes, most of the time, I have the luxury of it not mattering when I go to sleep or when I wake up. So, for example, tomorrow or tonight, I can go to sleep any time I want. I can go to sleep at 12, I can go to sleep at 5 whatever you know time I want to go to sleep I can because I don't have to get up at any particular time but if I had an appointment at 10.30 in the morning that would be that would be a night where I'd possibly that's when I struggle a little bit and that's more to do with Perhaps a little bit of worrying about what's going to happen. Because it's usually uh, like an important meeting or interview or, you know, something that I need to be uh, alert for. But most of the time, when I'm laying in bed, I don't care. There's no voice in my head going, you must go to sleep now. You've only got six hours left to sleep. I must go to sleep now. <laughs> None of that stuff. I generally don't care. Don't doesn't matter. I don't care if I sleep or not sleep. I'm quite happy just to lay there and just daydream even. Because, you know, in a way, daydreaming and sleep dreaming is kind of the same thing really, isn't it? It's just your mind wandering. Sort of similar kind of thing where you kind of lose contact with the outside world and that can be done when you've got your eyes open during the day sitting in a chair in a classroom I remember that very well just being bored out of my mind And daydreaming. Daydreaming about anything else. But, you know, that got me away from that situation. Not that it wasn't necessarily a horrible situation. I just was bored. I, I was bored all the way through school. Um, just wasn't interested in any of the subjects. Mildly interested in religion. Mildly. But other than that, none of the other stuff. And so it was just... It was, I said, like treading water. It was just... Just got to get through it. So I kind of... I'm used to drifting off. I'm used to my mind just you know, going somewhere else. And so I find it easy to do that. And I have a very low tolerance for boring people. Not boring people, not boring them, or it's people that are boring me. 
but at the same time it's not that they're boring it's just that I'm bored by them because their subject matter is this I'm talking about things that I'm not interested in and that bores me I mean it could be about quantum physics and quantum physics is it's a not a boring subject but unless you're interested in it it might not be as interesting as it is for the person talking about it and as we talk about this Andre has just run out and gone to the toilet yet again not on the car, not on the paper that he's supposed to go. Ever since I cleaned the carpet the other day, he won't go anywhere near that part of the carpet. So I had to put the paper elsewhere, and he doesn't like it. And he's going to be in for a shock because tomorrow, or Wednesday, I don't know when, I'm getting delivered a carpet cleaner, like a proper. Vax carpet cleaner which is going to spruce this place up every single bit of this carpet is going to be cleaned over the next few days and I'm going to clean it every week so he will just have to get used to going where I tell him to go because his scent won't be anywhere it won't stay long enough so hopefully he'll start behaving. That'd be so nice. This carpet's going to look great. Well, it won't look great because the edges have been ripped up by Andre, but the middle bit's okay. It's just uh, needs cleaning. So I'm going to be using that tomorrow or Wednesday or Thursday, whenever it is. I've also got a beard trimmer coming it's one of these it's a Philips one one stop or one beard or one something and it's you can it's like a wet shaver but with attachments on it so you can do the, the you know the size of your beard the length so when that comes through I'm going to tidy my face up because at the moment I've just got this big scraggly beard so it's you know and I wouldn't mind I wouldn't mind my beard if it wasn't for the greys the grey hairs because when I was younger when I grew a beard and I've been growing a beard since I could because I had such a young little face that as soon as I was able to sort of grow anything on my chin and it was one of those um, not muffs what do they call it you know you know, like a, a young teenager has this little random hairs growing off their chin and they're so proud of it like it's got the, like I've got, I'm a full man now I've got a beard it's like no you haven't you've got three hairs my nipple's hairier than your chin and it's just like oh okay a bit weird but uh, can I just have my chips then please because I used to work in a chip shop you see and that's what I did so that I could get served in pubs and you know buy cigarettes and alcohol or whatever else I was supposed to you know do at that age so I've had beards you know pretty much my whole life apart from times when I had to shave it off because of jobs or maybe because I wanted to shave because sometimes I quite like to have a shave I have a nice smooth face and sometimes I'll just stroke my chin it might sound a bit weird but I'll, I'll shave and I'll just sort of sit back in my chair and I'll just kind of molest myself it's kind of a bit weird I grope my own face like oh stroking it's so smooth 
it's so because it is very smooth when it's stubble free that's a weird sentence isn't it? like I grope my own face yeah but it feels nice but I don't like I don't like the way I look without a beard I think I, I suit a beard not the one I got now but the one I was wearing yesterday. No, not the one now. I lo- you know, it needs to be tidy. It seems weird, really, that I keep myself tidy in other places, but not in places where people can see. If you could see above me elephant trunk, it's nice and tidy. But it's, that's hidden. But my chin, my face, the way everyone can see if I'm walking around, that's just messy. So why am I why am I giving more attention to places that no one ever, is ever going to see? Which is a question that I didn't realise was going to come up, and now it has. So I don't know how to answer it. And when I was younger, I had when I grew a beard, I had so I got dark hair, but the beard I got kind of a ginger beard. Like there's a lot of gingers, especially around the the chin area, like the sides of the chin, and just below my mouth. I know, I suppose, in case you didn't know where the chin was. Um, I'll draw you a map. So I had gr- um, ginger hairs, so I've got ginger in my family. My uncle, my nan's brother was ginger. And it's quite interesting because I've got two cousins and they've both got ginger children. Like a ginger girl. The other one's got a ginger girl as well. Yet they're not ginger. So the ginger um, gene does pass through. So it's quite interesting that there's no gingers in any of the children or the grandchildren, but in the great-grandchildren, there's ginger. But my chin was ginger. And, well, other places as well. So, but what happened? I didn't realise this was going to happen. Because nobody told me. But then, I don't think it's a subject that people had thought about before. And regarding me, maybe it just wasn't something that they just didn't come up. That those bits of my beard that were ginger became grey like first before not before it became ginger but you know they became the first grey hairs in my chin knee chin chin and also in my hair as well so I had kind of ginger bits in my hair and those ones have become grey as well I think, in a sense, I'm doing all right regarding grey hairs in my hair, my head, because I had it. Um, I had my hair cut a few weeks ago, and it was pretty much shaved off. And I was looking through the hair, and there was clumps of grey. There's some clumps of grey at the right at the front of my hair. And it's a little bit of the sides, but it's not grey grey, you know. It's not that prominent, and which I'm surprised considering I've got fairly dark hair. And it's most of it's still dark, and I'm. I don't know how old I am. How old am I? I'm forty-eight. Wow, forty-eight. And I still got dark hair, 
and I would say my hair's a lot darker than my dad's was when he was my age and not that that really means anything but it's just uh, I win <laughs> I'm the winner but the beard the greys in the beard I'm not a massive fan of it if I'm honest it's yeah I'm not I'm not and my beard trimmer broke so that's why I've got another beard trimmer coming but the other one was an electric thing and this one's going to be a bit more hopefully a bit better and I'll be able to just do it nice you know make it I might have like a little landing strip between my my ears and my chin just you know all the way down and maybe I don't know maybe it's like do it do it so that I can maybe smell smell maybe spell my name you know into the beard JC baby or something like that JJ loves Andre and yeah that's what I'm thinking so I'm gonna play around with that the good thing about my beards are very much like sandcastles because if you make a mess at a sandcastle you get another chance tomorrow to start all over again and that's beards are like that you know you shave shave it off or reshape it you've only got to wait a few days and you can redo it because it grows back now my top lip I'm not sure what I'm going to do about yeah I don't know I don't know how short I want the beard to be but I'm thinking that I'm going to maybe not yet but I think I'm going to go to the hairdressers and get my hair done properly in maybe a month or two when it starts getting a little bit curly at the sides and I'll get it st not styled so much but you know just cut nicely because there's this little part of me that would like to look uh, if human is the word but presentable um, I suppose realistically fanciable would be nice but it takes more than a shave and a haircut you know it's, doesn't matter what I do to my beard I'm still going to have a belly although it is reducing I've lost I think I've lost weight last time I weighed myself I was 97 kilos so I'd kind of put a little bit of weight on I had gone down to 95 kilos I don't know what that is in stone or pounds but I think kilos is at one oh, 2.2 stone per oh it's 2.2 pounds per kilo I think something like that so I don't know 200 and I don't know something pounds how would, would that work out 100 2.2 2. 2. 2.5 is it 2.5 1 kilo equals 2.5 pounds that I mean I'd be 250 pounds which I don't I think that's that's too much not 250 pounds that's way too big so maybe 220 pounds this 2.2 
220 that's not that's not that's not heavy is it 220 pounds nah that's all right I think if I was 120 kilos that would be you know that would be a little bit ooh you know especially for my chair and it squeaks now imagine it start yelling if I got to that weight every time I sat in it but I haven't got managed to get to the gym yet I went once I've probably been a member now for three months I've been once once and I felt really good afterwards but it's the getting up in time to go because there's a two hour slot that I'm allowed to use the gym it cost me £18 a month just for those two hours which is a bit annoying because the only reason I'm joined that gym is because it's close or close-ish it's still a half hour walk but I might I don't know you know what I mean I do want to go to the gym and you know work out for an hour or two a day and get myself a bit more trimmed a bit more you know a bit more muscly a bit more um to get my leng- my lungs my lungs uh, capacity a little bit more increased and just generally get a bit fitter but there's also a punch bag there which is the the main thing that I like because in a way I prefer to punch a punch bag than do weights because you don't need anything else if you've got a punch bag you get on air for an hour or two a day you don't need anything else if it's just general fitness you're after because you've got the cardiovascular thing because if you keep it's not about punching it hard either if you keep moving around and ducking and you know punching and moving around and just you're moving and you get out of breath and it's good it's all the different parts of your body pumping and you're using all the muscles of your body really if you move if you're moving around and you're punching from different angles and you know putting your weight behind one punch and then against the you know blah 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 so when I was in there last time I actually I went to I went to kick the bag and I missed I nearly fell over and I was embarrassed I mean my kicking abilities are ridiculously rubbish these days I mean you know I've done quite a few different martial arts which involve kicking and I just don't have the don't seem don't seem to have that anymore it's the I think my best kicking abilities was when I was doing Wing Chun Kung Fu and Jeet Kune Do and that was back in 2004 because I used to go to the to the training club to the Kung Fu club on a Tuesday no is it yeah Tuesday and a Thursday or it might have been a Monday and a Wednesday yeah Monday and a Wednesday for for Wing Chun and uh, Friday would be leg spa and would go in there and there'd be no you could block with your hands there was no punching and the whole thing was just you got padded up and you just kicked just kicked each other and you'd even block with your legs as well but I think you were allowed to block with your hands but no punching 
or elbows or anything like that. It was just purely kicking. And you go from one, one spa person to the next. And it lasted for about two hours. Very tiring. And I became quite... I suppose I got used to the kicking bit. If it's all you do for, for a while, I kind of got used to it. And... It's the only time that I really enjoyed kicking. Usually I'm not really not really being a big fan of kicking, even though I've done karate and taekwondo. And taekwondo is basically it's more about kicking than it is about punching. And I did about three or four gradings for that. And that was... I stopped doing that just over four years ago because of my back, my lower back problems but when I was doing that I couldn't kick very high you know it was if I ever got into a fight with someone it'd have to be really really short for me to have a chance you know like three foot four foot because that's about I don't even know if I could... Yeah, four foot. I could probably kick... I can kick stomach height. Which is not even four foot, is it? It's probably got about three foot. But yeah, I'm not really into cook, cooking or kicking. How did I get talking about that? I went from ginger, ginger to grey hairs, and then talking about, oh yeah, talking about that, get myself nice and tidy, that appeals to me a little bit, to get myself nice and groovy, nice and, you know, I want to get some hooks, some like clothes rack hooks to put on my bedroom wall so that I can keep everything on the walls off the floor away from Andre so that his uh, lovely little stink can't get onto my clothes and then when I go out I can just make sure he doesn't touch anything and I can be ferret stinky free Then I realised that I suppose I'll have to start washing as well. <laughs> Gotta wash. Gotta wash. So yeah, um <sighs> I kind of decided or kind of realised on uh over the weekend that I would like a girlfriend I kind of haven't really been bothered with it for a long time but I think yeah I came to a realisation that actually I think it would be quite nice to to have someone to you know spend time with and that so we'll see I don't know it's uh see when I when I was a DJ many many years ago many many years many 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 years ago it was a great opportunity to meet people and yeah I met a lot of people and had lots of dates and it was you know it was a good experience and it was a good way of doing it because I was just there and 
they would just stare and you know kind of nature just took its course you know if people like each other they kind of um, end up talking to each other if it's if it's a possible situation and that was but you know I find it less easy if it's someone at a you know shopping in the supermarket to just go up to them and say oh so uh, I can't do the same chat up line not that it was a chat up line but it's a different conversation I can't go to someone that's you know looking at the the cat food aisle or whatever and say hi I'm Jason how you doing you alright I'll just let you know if uh, I'll be doing a disco at at 12 o'clock so if you want to you know make a request come and see me I can't do that now because I'm not a DJ anymore so it doesn't quite work I mean what am I supposed to say oh hello um, my name's Jason um, I'm I'm unemployed I live with a smelly little stinky ferret who thinks he owns the place and when he's not being naughty he's untrainable I mean, that's another thing uh, he will try and bite your feet and uh, he's lovable but he's he's annoying as well and um, oh I have no money so I can't buy you anything um, what else yeah so do you want to go out you know it's, I don't know if it's quite hard to sell this you know it's uh, and that shouldn't really necessarily be about stuff about money and about um, although I will have money at some point I've no doubt about that but it's it's kind of I don't want anything different to what I ever did want I won't go into detail but there's certain things that I've always liked and I always will but among those things, forgetting physical attributes or anything like that, is just someone that I get on with, you know? Someone that I can have a laugh with. Someone that I enjoy being with. That's ultimately God, this is boring. this this is this is interesting. This is mildly interesting. Sorry about that. To me anyway. Um so I kind of like the idea of meeting someone but in a kind of natural, organic way rather than a forced way as in, you know, internet and dating apps and stuff like that because on a dating app, let's say uh, Plenty of Fish, I tried that and I put a picture of myself and I don't take a good picture, I never have which is probably why I make faces when I do a, take a picture because I don't I suppose I'm a bit um, well everyone is aren't they they're animated but like some people um, I see seeing Instagram pictures and people take selfies and they manage to get like the perfect picture where from an angle where they look really you know very different to how they look in reality and I think I probably look better in person than I do in a picture not by much but I think because you know when someone is it's an animation isn't it you could, we're animated as humans we're when we move and we talk and we express there's different expressions and the face looks different continuously 
with the eyes opening, the mouth opening, and the eye, the ears flickering around. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, it's a standard thing, isn't it, with newspapers, they take a picture of somebody, and it's just a normal, you know, a normal day or normal night, or whatever it is. But they manage to, they, they take thousands of pictures and they find one where the person's making a face. Maybe they're just grimacing as they're getting into the car or getting out of the car. Maybe they farted, who knows, they're just making a face. And the person, and the person looks awful. As if that represents them. And it doesn't because we're just a stream of different faces, aren't we? Different expressions, we're not just one one face, one expression. Expression? <laughs> Expression. Although I kind of think that I might have a rested, miserable face. I've been thinking about this. And, but I'm not, I, I do, I like to moan, but I think at the same time I can be quite fun to be around. Because, uh, Guys, like I'm doing a dating, writing me a little dating script. I'm a lot of fun to be. I like to laugh. Yeah, we all like to laugh. No, but I like to laugh. I enjoy it. Yeah, we all enjoy it. But I like to laugh. <laughs> what I find interesting in these dating apps is so I've only really been on Plenty of Fish because it's the only one that was free that I found although it's not really free because if you want to read any messages you've got to pay them and you know nowadays it didn't used to be like that years ago but what did I do oh yeah I I've seen some of the profiles of people where it says, first of all, they list everything they don't want. Which, to me, that's that's somebody that does not ever get a response. Would not get, get a response from me. And I imagine it would scare off a lot of people. When they say, I don't want this. Oh yeah, what's the, famous, the famous one is, my children will always come first. That's a sentence that does never need to be said. It's like, yeah, obviously, you you know, they're your children. It's, it's like me putting, Andre will always come first. Of course he will. He's my boy. Yeah, no one, no one comes before my boy. But, you know, it's, it kind of, it, it's, it's negative, isn't it? Right at the beginning. I don't like snorers. Well, I can see the point in that because I snore. So I can ideally would want someone that sleeps really, <laughs> really well, which means nobody that listens to my recordings, perhaps. Or everybody that listens to my recordings, maybe. I imagine getting together with me just so I could bore you to sleep. Like Jason, yeah. Um, let's not do any of that other stuff tonight. Can you just talk to me again? No, but I want to do, you know, other stuff. No, no, I'd just rather talk. I feel much closer to you when you talk. What do you want to talk about? It doesn't matter. Just read the telephone directory. Just, just, just talk. And I'll just be over here with my eyes closed. I just feel used. I'm not a sleep toy, you know. A sleep toy. So, yes. You know, I've really used hypnosis with a girlfriend. Which surprises me because... I'd thought it would be quite a good thing to help somebody with um, but I don't think I have 
No, I have. Yeah, I have a couple of times, but not like you know regularly. I mean, I think if I did have a girlfriend, what I'd like to do, I'd like to get a massage table. Buy a massage table, and uh, because I'm, you know, I've trained as a masseur, and I know how to to do it. And long, long time ago, but I'm good. I was very good at it. So that'd be quite a nice thing. I'd like to relax. I mean, I don't mass don't need to do massage to relax somebody, because I know how to do it with my. I was going to say with my tongue, but I meant with my words. I know how to do it with my with my words. And but there's something nice about that physical contact, and it's very healing. Massages. I don't think it's got as much credibility as it should have. I think massage, body massage, is. One of the best things in the world, and that I think we should all have from babies onwards. You know, every every week or every few days, every day even, just a nice body massage. From you know, because you can give babies massages. You've got to be more gentle, of course, and that would be something that the parents would do. And um, of course, with also children, parents, I guess, would have to do that or professional but it'd be lovely you know to imagine every day for half an hour or an hour everybody just had a massage full body massage to relax them for one hour every day of their life can you imagine how much calmer everyone would be how much um, more grounded and maybe happier the world would be just one hour for each person a day and I know practically it might not you know, seem very like a logical thing because okay where are we going to get millions of people to train as as massage therapists and stuff but it's I don't know, I don't have the answer to that. It's just fantasy, isn't it? I mean, I don't know where to get handcuffs from, but it doesn't mean I have to stop fantasizing about them. You know, I fantasize about stealing a, a police car, but I'm not going to do it. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't know why I said that. Um, that would be so healing. And imagine if, as well as the massage, the masseur talked to the person and told them how great they were and how wonderful they are and what a kind person that you are and how you have the ability to achieve anything you wish and, you know, your your energy is so infectious, your your laughter, your kindness, your kind heart affects other people in a real positive way. Can you imagine if people were walking around believing that, believing, really believing that actually they're helping to heal other people by being around them, by being kind, they're changing the world. They're healing other people. And that being kind is and generous and loving is the most important thing in the world. To do that to everybody. Everybody you meet. Imagine teaching children that from an early age. Because let's face it, you could teach a baby anything. You could teach a small child to believe in absolutely anything. 
And if you teach them for long enough, they'll believe it into adulthood and maybe for the rest of their lives without the ability of being able to eradicate those uh, mistaken beliefs that's been like popped into their head so imagine instead of believing that you can pick your choice I won't say it but to believe in a, have a certain belief system where anyone that doesn't believe in it is wrong you know that kind of stuff which is not helpful um, in uniting the world and peace and all that but to believe that first of all that sleeping is a lot easier for you now and also believing that you have the ability to make changes and there's something to remember and I know that technically this is not hypnosis because it's just me talking there's a little bit of stuff mixed in but <sighs> hypnosis is the opposite to anxiety, stress, panic it's the opposite Relaxation is the opposite to stress, anxiety and panic. It's the opposite. And when you listen to me, regardless of what I'm talking about, for the very least you can relax. And on that amazing message... I shall go and I will speak to you next time. Take care of yourselves and remember that you deserve to be happy. And remember to be kind to yourself. Bye.